Uh, good evening. Yeah, uh, the team went backwards on the weekend. Well, we we're obviously playing the best team in the competition, and on the back of that, uh, we probably had our younger side for a number of years, and I think. I went out a look at how many more games experience they had along than us on the day, and it was 500, so sometimes just, that can be telling. I didn't mind the, uh, the physicality stuff. I mean, we know that Dean Solomon and Barrow will talk to you about that in a sick. That was an isolated incident. And I didn't mind the ferocity that you came out with, but it appeared that after it was almost that the Dockers got battered into submission and then they were second to move, reacted, for, um, didn't have the quite same positive strength and attack on the football as they did against Destin and E.G. Shammer and McPhee. Some of the things, what can happen to you is when you have a younger side, you can't sustain that sort of pressure. And, and obviously on the back of Geelong and how big and strong all, all those players are across the board, when you do tend to play a younger side, sometimes you can be um, out-bustled and, and it can take its toll quickly. So, um, oh, look, I thought up until half-time we were reasonably competitive. And, uh, but after that, naturally, John got, it, John got away from us and that's the, the common theme that they do to teams. Halves, did you say Geelong had 500 games more experience? Yeah, across the board, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. I mean, look, we're uh, on the back of a few retirements and a few long-term injuries and uh, things like that. Well, yeah, we've been, we had three first-year players out there and you know, a lot of, another three or four guys that have played less than 20 games, so... That's unbelievable. No, that. Now, mate, can we can we work that out, Harves? I like you and, and uh, you know, I like talking to you. But who started the fights, mate? Did you start them or did Geelong start them or was it tit for tat? I saw, I saw your mate, Mark Thompson, after the game say that, you know, it wasn't us. We were just reacting that, uh, you know, we were, we were out there playing footy. Uh, he, he sort of, he almost had a bit of a crack at you, Harves. <laughs> It'd be fair to say it's a little bit strained at the moment, our relationship. <laughs> is that, is that right? uh, Imagine look, if you weren't his mate, what he would have said. <laughs> no, look, mate, look, can I just give you a, 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 a free kicks in the first quarter was 17-5. Now, you know, when you ask me that question, I would have thought that we, we're more than playing the ball in that particular... Uh, look, uh, this, this count sold the Solomon issue at this stage. But 17 free kicks to five, our way, would suggest that we're actually first into the ball and doing a lot of things right, I would have thought. Mm. It, it was, I mean, Dean, the Dean thing was untoward and uh, it was one of those issues where Dean found himself running at Cameron and the initial one was to tackle him. Then in between that, he'd obviously released the ball and he got momentum up and then for whatever reason couldn't stop and and you saw the result. And uh, it's not something he's proud of and you saw him apologise straight after the game and I thought it was a, 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 a good gesture if there is one in this sort of outcome and he really meant it you could tell by the tone in his voice and his demeanour Are you fearing the worst? I mean you sure you have people who represent you at these sort of things at the tribunal and what, what's their gut feel? I mean the fact that you've got seven games to go does that worry you that the, he might get the full seven? Well they, I mean I mean, I can't comment on what they give him but I wouldn't have thought that they'd take that into consideration um, uh, we, we're going to discuss all that tomorrow Brad we haven't gone into detail yet as yet um, uh, that all happen. But you know they're going to use him as an example. The fact that you guys aren't playing in the finals, there's seven games to go, want to stamp this out. So, look, we can use him as the scapegoat, so to speak. Uh, not that he's a scapegoat as such. I mean, he, what he did I would, like, I would like to think that they don't use us as a scapegoat and whatever penalty comes up, then that's right across the board. But Should you be sanctioning him, sanctioning him yourself, though? Because... Um, it's his second suspension for the year, and it's going to be massive. It's going to be six to eight weeks. It's you know up with Barry Hall, people are saying, and well, it's about six times in thirty games, isn't it, Huff? And Farmer and Black have copped it, suspended or yeah. reported. Should you be doing something to him as well, a la what Sydney did to Barry Hall? Um, I'm not sure what the double penalty achieves, um, and I'm, I'm not sure why beyond what a tribunal outcome is. And let's say if it's uh, it's extensive tomorrow, or um, then well, I'm not sure what another penalty does on top of that. Well, he's not getting the message, though, is he? You're obviously telling him not to play like that, unless they're just following orders. I mean, they're not supposed to be elbowing blokes in the head and, and being suspended for the rest of the year. Yeah, I think when you, you know, whatever, however amount of weeks that Dean gets, that, that that comes through the hip pocket and that, and that sort of hurts you on top of him understanding where the game's at. So, um, as I said, it's not something we've discussed yet. I think we'll wait for the outcome and then we'll decide after that. So, so you are saying he'll get a monetary penalty by not playing. Is he on a performance-based contract or is it an well, unconditional? Well, all, all, all players do, but um, well, 
I'd say 90% of players do if mm. they mm. finish up getting suspended, that that hurts him in the hip pocket. Yep. So he's out of contract. Could this affect his prospects at the club or not? Oh, look, I think he's had a, a pretty reasonable year, Dean. Mm. Um, That's fair, But yep. uh, having said that, you know, you, you carry these sort of things into next year, and uh, but his performance has been quite good. So I sort of... We haven't gone in depth into discussions of players' futures yet, but in time that will happen. Continually, your boys get the ball okay, hard, but they continue to butcher it. I mean, what things have you put in place to, as I said, I know it's very hard, young and all that sort of stuff, granted, but even young Reese Palmer now, at least he keeps getting the ball, but he's starting to slice more than he actually strikes properly. So, what measures are being taken to make sure these kids are getting it better between now and the end of the year, and hopefully even better over the summer? Well, you ran. Obviously, the skill level, skill acquisition during the week, week has been ramped up. Um, in the last, even the last ten weeks, we've sort of really gone over and beyond with our skill work. Um, the younger players can tend to get a little bit tired towards this part of the season, as you know, Brad. And I'm sure once you find a lot of these younger players, once they do another pre-season, the strength comes in, the core strength, and uh, another pre-season and speed and enhancement. Um, and just the, the tempo and the comfortability about playing the game, I'm, I'm sure all that sort of poise comes as, as the years go on. So um, I, th- I think that's where it's at. But we are. We're, not, we're making too many mistakes. And, and that's reflective of where we're at on the ladder. And most teams on the ladder, and Geelong's the best side of capitalising on mistakes. I mean, they had 150 more positions in it. So, yeah. I mean, that's enormous. The kids aren't your problem for me. I mean, look, they've got skill problems for sure. But some of your senior players take make real bad option errors halves and I think that's probably you know particularly under pressure and when the timing is wrong to you're not only just on the weekend because you're right behind for most of the day but other games as well I mean how do you how does that sit with you when you when your leaders your glue as we I like to refer to them are making those horrible option taking yeah it's a continual process of working visually um uh, at training um you know, creating awareness drills, looking for longer options, uh, player, the, the teammates of the, the side creating better options for each other, and, the, the, and then also the alleviation of, uh, you know, blocking and shepherding so your teammate kicks without pressure. It's all of those sort of natural things that should be instilled in the team sometimes uh, go by the wayside. Harves, Robert Shaw on the paper today sort of implied that he thought that Cam Mooney might be in trouble for one of those hits on Reese Palmer. That didn't happen. How do you feel about that? Oh well, that's right. That's Robert's opinion. Um, uh, you know, I'm not in. I'm not into what the opposition have done to us. But I leave that to the tribunal and, and people that analyse and review games. So, uh, you know, that's their decision. What about this comment? Uh, at least we were prepared to take on the men, not not a kid under the under from the 18, under 18s. Oh look, make no mistake. A few of our guys got heavy treatment. <laughs> But Ryan you know, Crowley, for instance, was n- never let go at any stage by the opposition, so, but we don't complain about it. Very in different form by the likes of Farmer and Peak and Co. Do you continue to go with them? Brad, I've got 13 players either off, yeah, I'm sort of not available at the moment, and, um, and it's the type of player that you need, which is, you know, at this particular stage we need some running players who can play in the midfield. Uh, we've got enough sort of taller options in the side at the moment, but it's the complement of. You know, when you you lose guys like you know Matthew Carr and Peter Bell, who primarily have played in the midfield all their careers here at Fremantle, that you're looking for those sort of players to fill the void at this particular stage of uh, our season.